and at lowest point. Do you follow me on that? If it's continuous for this part, it'll be there. Now, where might it exist? Where might that happen? Well, there's only a set number of points. If you think about it, if you think about it, that's a closed curve, true? Closed curve with my closed interval. Where could the absolute maxes and mins possibly occur? Well, they're either going to occur at a relative point where I'm switching from decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing. It's going to happen either there or it's going to happen at the end point. There's only two cases. It's either switching from going up to going down, that gives us a low point or a high point, or it's at the end where I would continue to go up, but I just chop it off and I go, no, you stop there, ha, 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 ha. And then it has to occur there. Does that make sense to you? So it's either got to be at an end point or at a relative uh, max or min. That means a critical number. So what's going to happen for your, your absolute max or min? For any closed interval, it must take place. You should be writing this. It must take place at either a critical number or an end point. This will occur. at either a critical number or the endpoint. Can you raise your hand if you understand that logic? that it's going to be one of those two places. It's either going to be where a function changes from going up to going down, going down to going up, or at one of the stopping points of our interval. Do you follow me on that? It's got to be one of those places. Which means there's only a, a few points you need to check when you find an absolute max min. You're going to be checking your critical numbers by plugging them into your function, but you're also going to check your endpoints. We'll do some examples of that in just a second. And whatever's the highest one, that's your absolute max. Whatever's your lowest one, that's your absolute min. That's it. That's all we're going to have to do. This implies one more thing, though, kind of like a corollary. What if I don't have it closed? What if I have this? What if it open? Think about this for a second. This is an interesting case, okay? Check it out. Not check out my racing, check out what I'm going to write after a race. <laughs> check it out, I can erase really good. <laughs> Let's go. If this is closed and the points are included, can you all see that the absolute minimum for this interval is right there? That happens at actually a relative <coughs> min, where we change from decrease to increasing. The absolute maximum is not this point, because there's a point higher. It actually occurs at the end point. You follow me? But now watch what happens if I say, ah, ha, ha, ha. That would be this case, by the way, where you're closed. What happens if I say, no, no longer do you have those points? Now this and that. Where they're not included, that's this case. That's this case. Do you still have an absolute minimum? Yes, that point is the same. Do you have an absolute maximum? It's not here anymore, is it? Do you have an absolute maximum? Hmm, think about the question. Does this ever stop getting closer? Let's say this level is 3. Okay, let's just pretend that's a 3. Does it ever get to 3? No. Does it get to 2.9? Does it get 2.99? 2.999. 2.9999. 2.9999. 2.9999. Can you keep doing that forever and ever and ever? So do you ever reach an absolute max? No. No. No, you don't. Because you can keep getting closer and closer to three. Between any two points, you can find an infinite number of points, right? Between 2.999, however much you want to go, and three, there's an infinite number of, of points that you can attain. So there is no absolute maximum here. What this says is that if you, listen carefully, if you've got a closed interval, you are going to have an absolute max and an absolute min if it's closed. Understand? 
if it's open, that means the absolute max and min must happen if they occur at a relative point, at a critical number. That's where they have to occur. If they don't occur there, then they don't exist at all. Closed intervals, you got both. Open intervals, if they were to occur, they would happen at your critical numbers. If they don't, then they don't exist. If they occur, if they occur. They do so at critical numbers. Because there are no endpoints. Take away the endpoints here and they have to happen at critical numbers. Let me do one thing for you, okay? Let's fill out, let's say that this is no, no longer just open, let's say this one is closed. Does it change the fact that we have an absolute min, but we don't have an absolute max? Let's say that I open this one back up and I close that one. Does that change the problem? That now has an absolute max. And that's the idea. You're going to be dealing with those type of intervals on your homework, where you're going to be finding your critical numbers, no problem. If they're closed intervals, you check your endpoints. If they're not closed intervals, you check your endpoints, but they don't have. <laughs> you check your endpoints. You would still check this. You'd say, how high does that reach? How high does that reach? If it reaches close to 3, if I were to plug it in, if it reaches close to 3, well, then that is bigger than this point, right? That means there is no absolute max. That means that, yeah, I get really close to that number. It's bigger than this one, but I never get there. Therefore, there is no absolute maximum. Um, so, for instance, if I ask you this question, find the absolute max between the interval of negative 1 to 4. And I ask it to you this way. If it's this way, they're both closed in. You follow me? Absolute min is here, absolute max is there. If I ask it to you this way, absolute min is here, absolute max is there. If I ask it to you this way, looks like that. Absolute min is here, absolute max is up. Does not exist. Why not? Because you'd say, well, if it were to exist, it would occur either here at a critical number or here at an endpoint. However, I don't have an endpoint. So all you have to do is this. This is what you would do. You would take this number, even though it's not an endpoint, you'd plug it in. You'd plug it into your function and you'd say, is this value bigger than this value? Function-wise, because you're not going to have a graph. You're going to do this all with your functions. You'd plug it in. If this number, when you plug it in, is bigger than this critical number, the, the height of that, then you can't possibly have an absolute max because this one's going higher than that. That's what you're talking about. If you do this, nothing changes. Same, same. Thing. So if you were to go on with the function to the right and come back down and then put like the open interval, would you say? Like right here? Yeah. You'd have an absolute max. Okay. Well, what we say we do a couple examples here. We'll start one. Remember, that, that clock's a little fast, so we start with time. So to find your absolute max and min, you find your critical points and you evaluate them. Critical numbers. and you evaluate your endpoints. Let me give you an example um, so that I can, I can really flesh this thing out for you. And that will end our day. Make everything nice and clear.
Tell me the first thing you do. We're going to do it very quickly. What do you do? Do it. That's your derivative. Did you get the same derivative? Oh, good. My derivative hat's on. Taken right today. <laughs> what do you do with that derivative, folks? You're set equal to zero because you want to find the place where the slope is equal to zero, right? That's your critical numbers. That's the only places where you could possibly go from up to down to down to up. So set equal to zero and factor and solve. What are you going to factor out of that? You're going to get x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals zero. You're going to continue to factor. You're going to get x minus 3. You're going to get x minus 2 equals zero. You're going to get x equals 3 and x equals 2. I factored that very fast, but I mean, that should be kind of no brainer stuff. Are you guys okay getting the 3 and the 2? Are you sure? <laughs> so here's what you check. These things right here are called your critical numbers. They are the only potential for going from increasing, decreasing, decreasing, increasing, your relative max and min. So what you check, you check for sure your critical numbers, x equals 3, x equals 2, x equals, and x equals... What numbers are you going to go here and here? One and five. One and five. Very good. One and five. Why are, where am I getting the one and the five? Sure. So one, five. Where do I evaluate those? The derivative is just going to give you zeros here. That's going to give you something worthless for those two. We plug it into original function because the original function gives you heights. Do you understand? The original function gives you heights. We want to find out what's the highest and what's the lowest. Would you take those numbers, people on the uh, right side, my right side, you people. Plug in the first two, you people. Plug in the last two. Make it quick, because we're out of time. As soon as you get them, just yell them out to me for the one and the two, and for the three and the five. You guys have it easy. I'd probably do the 1 if I really thought about it, but I didn't want to. 37? No, wait, no, way off. Minus 15. 23. 23. This gives you a height of 23. True? This gives you what now? 28. 28, like it. Okay. Uh, what else? What's the 3? 3 and the 5. Come on, 3 and the 5. The 5 is 55? Maybe not. 55, okay. 55. What's the 27 for this one? 27? 27? Perfect. This is, this is perfect numbers for us. Here is the explanation of absolute max and absolute min. You need to watch carefully. This is going to put everything together in your heads right now, okay? What's the largest number that is attained? 55. That is now your absolute max. Your absolute max is not 5. Your absolute max is 55. It occurs at x equals 5. Does that make sense to you? The absolute max is 55. It occurs at x equals 5. That's the end point. Do you see the end, how the end point comes into play for us? So this goes up and then stops. That was the picture I'd drawn earlier. What's the minimum value that's attained? 23. Did they occur at critical points or endpoints? For this one, endpoints. Sometimes they'll be critical points. Let me make one more thing very clear to you and then we'll stop for today. What if I had given you this? That. Listen, you do exactly the same thing. Exactly. Only when you plug this number in and you get the 55, can you actually get to the 55? Then you are gone with the max. That's how that would disappear. This would only have an absolute min in this case. If I did this, you'd have nothing. No absolute max, no absolute min. How many people understood today? Okay, we'll do one more example this next time, then we'll continue.